everybody doing? You keeping up? I know it's the afternoon shift and some of you have traveled in. We really appreciate it. I just want to continue from where Rarina left off. Anybody from South Korea? South Korea, anybody? Annyeonghaseyo! <laughs> Thailand? Thailand? Sawadika! Sawadika! So, welcome. Really good afternoon. So, trying to keep you up. Now, um, did we have some snacks that are coming through? I was just looking at whether is it supposed to be under the chairs or just looking at the queue. All right, this is going to be the tricky part. Oh, they are indeed under your chairs. But it looks like it's only for the lucky ones. So you may want to just reach out there and just grab hold and see whether they're a lucky one. And then there are a little bit more coming through. So it's the afternoon. We want to keep you awake. So grab hold of some popcorns. Did you get something here? Maybe she's coming around. Fantastic. So great. They are not props, they are edible. So enjoy them. Uh, you may be wondering why are we having popcorn? While you're grabbing the popcorn, we're going to explain why are we having popcorn. Let's go. to the EcoStructure World Premiere. So today we're going to have an exclusive look at three brand new EcoStructure offers. It will be amazing. That's why to watch any good, amazing show, you need to have some popcorns. There you go. I'm glad you're enjoying. How's that going, sir? It's good? It's good. So before, before you go into the show, I'm going to make you do a little bit of work. Whip out this amazing thing that John Pascal talked about that you can't live without. Whip out your mobile phone. Everybody's got one? You've got to take a break from the popcorn. Get your mobile phones out, OK? And then you should have an app that's called HK Events 17 that we have installed for you while you're registering. Thank you. You found it. Great. Now, in there, there should be a word cloud uh, application within the app. You got that? Fantastic. Now what you need to do, because you're also digital, we like you to key in one word that comes to mind when we talk about digital economy. Okay? Just one word. Just one word that comes to mind. And can we put out the word cloud as we're collecting your thoughts? Revenue, yep, we want some revenue when we talk about digital economy, security, future, growth sounds good, John Pascal, is that from you? Yeah? <laughs> thank you, thank you for the warm up, thank you for helping us to kick off the session today. So when I look at the word cloud, three themes come to mind. The first, urbanization. We know 2.5 billion more people are moving to cities in the next 30 years. That is about 10 Hong Kongs to be built every year for the next 30 years. Imagine that. Rarina, can you imagine that? 10 more Hong Kongs every year for the next 30 years. So that's a pretty daunting task when you have all these people coming to the cities. Now, which means we need more infrastructure. We need more schools, we need more airports, we need more hospitals. And guess what? The people need food, they need popcorn. So we're going to need manufacturing. So this is indeed the era of industrialization. And we're going to do all this in the most amazing time of our lives, which is digitization. And John Pascal spoke about, we can't imagine, you know, well, I have, I have two kids as well. 
And the first thing that wherever we go, it doesn't matter which holiday, the first thing they want to know is what's the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> and I guess that's not only to the kids. It's probably applicable to everybody in this room, yes? Yes, we're honest with ourselves. So that seems like a lifetime ago before the internet. But what appears to be pervasive today has been mainly on the B2C, B2C space with consumer connectivity. What's super exciting is that we in this room is in the business of B2B and digitization in B2B is going to grow significantly more. So imagine connectivity between product to product product to systems, machine to machine, machine to cloud, where big data combined with machine learning, artificial intelligence, takes us to a completely new level of enterprise and operational efficiency. At Schneider, we are pumped up with this opportunity. We have a bold idea where we will use digitization to serve our needs for better, Better efficiency, better safety, better connectivity, better sustainability, all right, and better efficiency. What we want is to turn this bold idea into bold actions, actions that deliver tangible results to you that you can measure. So today, we are going to do a world premiere of three ecostructure stories, ecostructure building, ecostructure IT, and Ecostructure Industrial Software Platform. So to join me on the stage to talk a little bit more about this, please join me to welcome Manish Kumar, <laughs> Senior Vice President of Buildings. Thank you. And Kevin Brown. How are you doing, Kevin? Chief Technology Officer of IT Business. And Dr. Ravi Gobinath, our Executive Vice President of Industry Software. Using your mic. So welcome, gentlemen, please. So, isn't this amazing? Look at everybody here today. How's the popcorn going? Good? We need more servings? <laughs> so, before we go into all the amazing stories on ecostructure and the bow actions you're going to share, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you saw the word cloud and what's on the audience mind. So, Manish, you are in charge of ecostructure solutions for buildings. And one of the things that is affecting the speed of adoption, right? Because John Pascal talked about a lot of efficiency opportunities that is still there for us to realize in buildings. But one of the challenges is about speed. So what comes to mind in terms of challenges and opportunities that customers are facing in buildings? Thanks, Chris. So we talked about uh, 2.5 billion people moving into cities. <laughs> and we said 10 Hong Kongs every year for 30 years. That's a pretty daunting short task. If we have to get through that transformation, we definitely need to be more efficient and we definitely need to make people more productive in building and definitely we need to be more sustainable uh, in the process. Now, digitization is definitely, I would say, the biggest lever to get that efficiency. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna see is explosion of connectivity and connected devices in the buildings. Uh, who would have imagined that desks, trash bins, and so on and so forth, these things are gonna get connected. But the reality is, all of these things are getting connected. So when they're gonna be connected, we're gonna get more insights about how these assets to be managed. Mm -hmm. Now, as Jean Pascal said, there are a lot of systems already connected, but the data is trapped in those systems. But the data is gonna be available in an open manner, and it's gonna be available for collaboration for a wider ecosystem, outside the people in the building, there's gonna be another layer of, I would say, unlocking the efficiency. So, putting these two together, I would say there is a huge potential to unlock efficiency mm -hmm. in the building, but more importantly, making people productive and giving them awesome experience in buildings. We personally believe we can actually make buildings 30% mm -hmm. more efficient today as well as, I would say, the cost of deployment of technology, we can actually reduce it by three. So, all of this is possible if we think about a platform approach, a platform that allows you to scale. When I say scale, the scale in terms of number of devices, capacity to get the data out of devices, and really deploy insights. And that's our promise of ecostructure building. Unlocking this value should be as easy as ABC, and making this efficiency happen. Thank you.
I love that. So 30% more efficiency, as easy as ABC. So that sounds, that sounds fantastic, isn't it? So Kevin, shifting gears a little bit to you, you are responsible for our data center solutions globally, <coughs> and we've got it everywhere. Let's talk about the word insight. So what's happening with the data center ecosystem and what challenges does that present to our customers? Well, it's interesting that we just had Manish talking about the connectivity that's happening in buildings because what we know is every device that's getting connected ends up in some sort of a data center mm -hmm. somewhere. And what's uh, fascinating is there's estimates of eight million new IoT devices coming on every day and uh, what's fascinating with this is there's estimates out there now saying that 40% of that data is going to get processed at the edge of the network, edge computing. Now, I find that fascinating in a couple of ways. Uh, 10 years ago, it was only 10 years ago that the term cloud computing was invented. Ooh. Now it's readily accepted that we run things in the cloud. And in 10 years, we've gone from inventing cloud computing and now talking about it's not good enough, now we need edge computing on top of that. Yeah. And when you combine that, you know, we took a look at uh, uh, you know, what happened in the last 10 years of data centers. Ten, compared to 10 years ago, we've made data centers, the physical infrastructure, 80% more efficient. And we've also taken the cost down by about 50%. So there's really a challenge uh, with What's going, to, what's going to the next 10 years going to bring? Where's the next 80% going to come mm -hmm. from is what we're really starting to focus on, given this amount of data that's coming on. And, and it's even more fascinating learning, well, not only specifically about you, Jean-Pascal, your kids and, and yours, where apparently there's riots if your children don't have uh, internet access. You know, I think that's actually true for all of us you, with the you millennials. Don't, you don't mean just Jean-Pascal and my kids is occupying. Well, I, was, I, was, I was trying to <laughs> clarify, but it's, uh, you know, there's a change happening with the millennials with all these systems coming on where the IT network now is as critical to what we do as the utility yeah. network is today. And uh, therefore, we need to be able to respond to that. So it's really about how do we meet this challenge of where's the next 80% going to come from given the challenge of edge computing and uh, the amount of data that's coming on. So it's a very complex ecosystem as a result to achieve that. You know, what we've considered a data center in the past I think is going to change. Uh, little data closets inside of uh, Manisha's buildings and the closets inside of uh, the industrial place, all of them now are going to need to be st start being treated as data center class implementations. And, and that's really the challenge I think uh, that, that the industry is facing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kevin. So, um, Ravi, I'm going to shift gears to you. You are responsible for EcoStructure Industrial Software. Two words that get thrown around a lot. Platform, open. So, what does platform, what defines a platform in your view? And what does open mean? And more importantly, how does Schneider differentiate in this space to serve our customers? You're right, Chris. There has certainly been a lot of hype in the recent past around platforms. And a lot of that has been driven by the trend in the industrial environment of, of connectivity and driving greater efficiencies. But it's important to understand that in the industrial world, connecting some devices, running a few analytics, is not enough in the context of very complex mission-critical applications and systems that have to run reliably 24-7. We have to remember that in the industrial world, connectivity between systems has been in place for 100 years. Advanced digital technologies have been in place for 50 years. And Schneider actually has been at the forefront of that entire journey, okay? So from my perspective, a platform really means harnessing core technology, but using that to enable the development of applications and services that drive measurable business value, and more importantly, enable people. Mm -hmm. And that is really the heart of our industrial software platform strategy. And so there are three things that really differentiate us. One is scale. Scale is important because the more information you manage, the more information you're controlling, the more systems you're overseeing and supervising, your platform gets much richer in terms of capability. And when you're running mission critical applications, you want to make sure that it's a proven scalable platform. Our platform today is deployed in over 100,000 sites. We monitor over 20 billion industrial parameters. 
we process over 10 trillion industrial transactions per day. All of this scale means that there is inherent power and provenness in our platform. But the journey doesn't stop there. The next step is the business value. And the business value comes to the richness of the functionality that is there in all of the applications that exist in the industrial software platform. And this has enabled us to drive measurable value in multiple industry domains. We are present in over 200 refineries worldwide, over 600 food processing plants, 1,000 power generation units. We manage 210,000 miles of oil and gas pipeline. All of this is measurable value, mm -hmm. which is not an experiment. This is proven business mm -hmm. results that, that have come out of the industrial software platform. And finally, your question on openness. For me, openness means three things. It's openness in terms of the ability of this platform to work across multiple devices and systems. We are agnostic to devices and systems, which means customers can protect their existing investments. And this is a very, very critical thing. The second piece, which is very important, is that in today's world, as Kevin said, of cloud computing, there is a lot of ability to, ha to harness greater efficiencies across the enterprise by leveraging cloud computing. But you also have to recognize that there is a mission critical aspect of these applications that need to res reside on premise. So our platform allows a flexible mode of deployment. And that is another aspect of openness. And the third, probably the most important part, is what I call the power of many. The ecosystem that we have around the world who have full access to our platform to develop a lot more of those value-adding business applications across those vertical domains. So these are the three things, scale, domain expertise, and openness that really set us apart. Ravi, you talk about, so scale, domain expertise, and open, and the power of the ecosystem. So can you illustrate how does this come together in a real life case? Yes, absolutely. So when we talk about the industrial software platform, there are really five key pillars that we refer to in describing the functionality. At the heart of what we do is really the core real-time visualization, control, information management capability that we have in our platform that allows our customers really to manage their mission-critical application minute by minute, second by second. That's really the heart of the functionality that we have. But around this are four key application areas that completely map the value chain of almost every industry we serve. And this really spans the asset life cycle and the operating life cycle of our customers' industries. At one end, we have technologies, the most sophisticated in the world, that allow customers to really design and engineer these complex capital assets. At the other end of the asset life cycle, ensuring that these assets perform reliably, minute by minute, 24-7, reliably and safely, and that is really a critical thing. On the operational side, our technologies allow customers to make the right long-range planning decisions so that they can aim for higher profitability. And on an ongoing basis to make sure they're continually optimizing to make sure they're extracting the most out of their operations. But the best way to illustrate all of this is how it comes together in a real life example. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about the electric world, mm -hmm. but there is a reality of our life today. For most of us who are in the room, we came here and are sitting in this room leveraging gasoline, mm -hmm. diesel, aviation fuel. Those modes of transport are very real today. All of those come out of the many hundreds of refineries that operate around the world. So I'm going to use a refinery example. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, we are present with our technologies in over 200 refineries around the world driving real value. Our technologies combined in most instances with Schneider's market-leading automation systems really power the central control room. So that is, if you think of the nerve center of a refinery, that's really where the, the, the mission-critical operations are visualized and real-time control is done. But the journey starts a long before. Journey starts when the refinery is figuratively a blank sheet of paper. When the owner of the refinery or the engineering contractor is really conceptualizing, how do I design this most efficiently so that we can achieve our business goals through this operation that we are setting up. So engineering efficiencies and all of those sophisticated tools then get used as, for example, operator training simulators. Mm -hmm. Much like flight simulators are used to train pilots, 
Our engineering technologies are used to train the operators of today and very importantly, the next generation of operators with cutting edge technologies so that they can operate those plants safely and reliably. Asset management with predictive technologies ensure a high degree of reliability and availability in those mission critical operations. Then, on an operation side, we have to remember that refineries, as an example, make most of their money not just through operations, but through buying and selling. Our technologies enable refineries today to make the right decisions of what crude to buy, where to buy it from, how to process it in their network of refineries. Those long-range decisions enable the enterprise to really maximize their profitability and efficiency. And then on an ongoing basis, minute by minute, second by second, we enable them through our optimization technologies at the other end of the operation cycle to continuously extract value. How do I operate this refinery while making sure I'm meeting emission norms, while making sure I'm ensuring the safety of the equipment and of the people? This all coming together can be consumed as individual applications, as a seamless integrated suite, all of which is enabled by the ecostructure architecture. That is the power of domain expertise coming together. That sounds awesome. And I realize some of you were taking photos of the slide. I wanted to make sure that you know we have a live control room for you right outside the hall after this plenary so that you can play with the applications and we can show you how it works in real life. So Ravi will be uh, sharing more in detail. So talking about domain of expertise, Manish, we at Schneider serve so many buildings around the world from where we live, residential, to offices, airports, hotels, to critical buildings, really, like hospitals, where it is really a matter of life and death. So I would like to share one bow action customer story uh, with Newmo's hospital for, for us to take a look. My name is Nelson Trophy, and I'm Director of Facilities and Operations here at Nemours Children's Hospital. We see many patients from all over the world here, year in, year out. We designed the hospital with the help of the families. Some of our kids that come here, unfortunately, are here for many weeks or months at a time. We have a number of partners that we've had for, for many, many years. I can't brag enough about the quality work that they've done for us. TLC is a mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection, and energy service company. I was involved with the project from the very beginning. One of the things the uh, owner charted us to do was provide redundancy, resiliency, and safety in our designs. We typically come across Snyder and use them for most of our projects. They're known throughout the healthcare industry as the like, unparalleled piece of the equipment for gear. Morale was chosen as the electrical contractor and they worked with us throughout the process. The job was pretty much specified through the engineering side of it and we were brought in to assist in the uh, how do we install it process. What keeps us all going is the relationships that we build and the people that we build them with. Uh, we have a local Snyder rep and we normally get our price direct for him for our larger projects. Gray Buyer was our Square D partner. They did our pricing and, and helped us get the job within budget. When we work with uh, design build projects, which Burrell has gotten us involved with before, and since we are a premier Schneider house, then we get Square D involved and we work with them on the technical aspects of laying out the job. There's a personal touch, there's a personal relationship, but the amount of hard work that's put into each and every job and the detail is unmatched. We had uh, regular design review meetings with the team and had MC Square come in and give us their suggestions. We bring design solutions where we're able to bring systems together. MC Squared has been a Schneider Electric authorized partner for many years. We work directly with a lot of their different divisions, whether it be power management, be um, building automation or the buildings division. We were able to help them out in their time of need. I think uh, the teamwork and integrated product delivery from the very beginning with all the team players involved made it a very, very successful project. There's nothing more important than our value chain. Nothing. 
when all of the players are doing what they're supposed to do, they have the expertise, skill, and capability in the, in the industry to make it all happen for the end users so that kids are able to receive their treatment, doctors are able to deliver their skill. To have partners that continue to perform for you every time, every job, is wonderful. So what do you think? So my first and foremost job is a mom. And every time I look at that, it reminds me of my greater purpose working in Schneider. So, and I hope you share that as well. So Manish, in this video, our customers talk to us about the full value chain of the partner ecosystem working together from consulting engineers to contractors to system integrators all the way uh, to our distributors and serving with our customer to children to make them feel better and recover better. Can you talk to us about how partner ecosystem works in buildings business? Definitely, it's a great story uh, and it's a kind of testimony of what partners can do to our technology and bring bold ideas of customer to life. Yeah. So definitely partner ecosystem is core to our strategy. We have over 3,000 system integrator, what we call eco experts, and they have more than 5,000 developers, engineer with them. Those, I would say individuals or those eco experts are really bringing domain expertise closer to our customers and bringing those innovative solutions to life. We together, are investing together, defining what should be the new technology, but also how the technology need to be deployed to bring those personalized, customized needs of our customer and bringing those buildings to life. Uh, not only I would say system integrators, we are also partnering with leading technology firms to bring the solid foundation behind the platform, but also innovative startups uh, so that we can bring the best of digital mm -hmm. to the buildings for our customers. Fantastic. And uh, Ravi, shifting gear to you. I know ecosystem is very central to your strategy. Can you share what does ecosystem mean in the world of ecostructure industrial software? Absolutely, Chris. Like I said earlier, for me, the ecosystem really means the power of many. Today, we have one of the largest industrial software ecosystems anywhere. We have 4,200 system integrator partners worldwide with over 5,700 certified developers on our technology. This is really power that is available to our customers to, to harness into so that they can build more and more successful applications that drive real business value. In addition to this, we work very closely with over 160 core technology partners that really bring their expertise into our product portfolio. But probably our best kept secret, uh, Chris, is also this. Within our own organization, we have close to 1,000 solution architects and application specialists. And it is this team that increasingly is working very closely with our, with our system integrator ecosystem to do a couple of things. One is enable them with the best of breed technology, enable them with the best practices so that our system integrator's capability continually improves, mm -hmm. and also to drive standards of excellence. What this means is when our customers are implementing a project or a solution from us, whether it's in China, whether it's in India, whether it's in the US, whether it is with us in collaboration with an SI partner, with mm -hmm. just with an SI partner, they're assured of the same standards of excellence consistency, and this is a key element mm -hmm. of what allows us to drive scale and business excellence. Yeah, and I think, Chris, if I may interject here, what's interesting is many things that Ravi's talking about, it, it reminds me in some ways of what happened in the IT industry in the 90s, mm -hmm. and everybody came exactly. in and said, you know what, you need exactly a new right. platform, yep. <laughs> and go and take up, forget what you had before, install a new platform, it will solve every problem you have. And the data came back five, six years later, 85% of those installations failed. 
And so the learning that I think we need to take from that as an industry is it's really about how do you take this expertise that our partners have, that your team has, and the installations that we've got and unlock that value in a more open way, in a more cloud connected way so we can apply some of the Absolutely. big data and machine learning against that. And uh, I, I think it's interesting to see that the IT industry is different than uh, uh, industrial, industrial yeah. but in many ways there's a, a lot of synergies and things Yeah, you're so much alike, there yes. you go. So interesting, Kevin. Schneider Electric has been recognized as a leader in Gartner's data center infrastructure management magic quadrant for three years in a row. Congratulations. <laughs> so we've done that for the last three years. So you are not taking a holiday anytime soon. So therefore, today we are launching in our premier EcoStructure IT. Tell us, what is this all about? Well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, obviously we're very proud that Gartner recognized the work that we've done, but the challenge we've been putting to the team is don't become complacent because our industry mm -hmm. is moving and our customers have new challenges. And as we're looking at those new challenges, uh, you know, it very clearly started becoming um, areas that we needed to do better was giving our customers more visibility, be able to give them insights on when failures would occur. And as we started working on this, we had a customer come to us and said in his words, if I had a dream, it would be that you would predict my failures before they occur. And we really harnessed that and, and rallied our teams against that. So we've really been evolving our DSIM platform to something much different than what won us the Gartner over the last three years. We, we are developing it to what we think will win us uh, our customers' loyalty and, and benefit our customers over the next five to 10 years. And uh, so it's been uh, an interesting challenge for us and I think we're starting to see some of that pay off. We've been piloting this product over the last year. We have about 500 uh, data centers installed. Mm -hmm. We have over 60,000 devices already online. Mm -hmm. And I think we have a video that can maybe tell the story better than I can. Bainbridge Island is just a beautiful place. I think it's unique because it's so close to Seattle, but yet at the same time, you're just away from it all as well. The Bainbridge Island School District has about 4,000 students. It's a great learning environment. The community takes a lot of pride in education. It's more of a shared learning environment with the families. My name is Alan Silcott. I'm the network supervisor for the Bainbridge Island School District. We have 11 buildings, nine different schools, a central data center, 35 different data closets. Technology is in every aspect of the schools. If our network were to go down for a day, it could cause serious disruption to our learning. We get wind storms and the winds can reach, you know, 40, 50 plus miles an hour. And when that happens, it, we're almost guaranteed a power outage. If we get even just a power flicker, all of our UPSs throughout the district will send me a notification email. It's kind of hard to sort through all those and make sure that everything came back online safely. We use EcoStructure IT Remote Service and their Mobile Insights app. Mobile Insights allows me to check the status of all my data closets from my phone at any time in any location. It does help to know exactly where the problem is as opposed to trying to decipher it from a flood of emails. We have remote service. It's nice to know that if there is an issue, that they have our backs and that they're contacting us immediately. It's more about peace of mind. Education is vital to this community. The Schneider Electric products give me that peace of mind to know that if there is an incident, kids can continue to learn and the classrooms can continue to operate until the school day is through. So it's, uh, you know, it, I think a key message in that video that I think is the challenge for all of us is how do, you, how do we give customers more information, less data? They want the data, but they really want the information behind that. So give them the visibility and insights to that. And in order to do that, we've also recognized 
uh, we've got to be much more open than we were in the past. Mm -hmm. And so we're already experimenting with companies that are more specialized in higher in the stack in the IT management. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, any of the third party equipment that, it, that exists inside of the physical infrastructure as well. So we, we, uh, we think we're on the right track and uh, we're excited to, of course, get more feedback as uh, we go on this journey together with all of you. So. You're right, Kevin. You know, the, the digital future, as, as was shown in that, in that lovely video, is, is really so central to what the whole future and the transformation is about. It's, it's one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about the transformation that we're driving here at Schneider Electric, because at the heart of all of these stories, what we see is the power of technology in terms of enabling people. And, and that's what makes it real, and that's what's enabled us to drive value every day. That sounds like what EcoStructure is all about. Really connecting everything from your shop floor to your top floor and collecting critical data from sensors to the cloud, analyzing, discovering meaningful insights, enabling you to take action, to close the loop, and to real-time information and business logic. So Manesh, how does this tie into the development of new services that we're offering in buildings? So Kevin said very important thing, it's not the data, it's the insight that mm -hmm. matters. And how does people act on that insight? Yeah. So what we are very excited about is you know, launching two insights in buildings. One is called EcoStructure Building Advisor. Now Building Advisor really allows, empowers actually facility managers to have understanding of the system and actually what's happening behind the system that is not visible with naked eye. And not only that, it allows you to give all the, see all the insight, but it also helps you prioritize which one you should act first versus second because it's a cost of acting on this insight mm -hmm. as well. Now, we believe using EcoStructure Building Advisor, you can actually have 33% fewer complaints and you can have 29% less unscheduled maintenance. One of our customers, Boston Scientific, they recently implemented EcoStructure Building Advisor, and actually they are seeing significant gains in first year. They are seeing $40,000 worth of saving every year because of unused or I would say energy wasted. But the best part or the most exciting part for them is less number of complaints from the occupants or their employees. When their employees are more productive, they are excited because they think it's a possibility for many bold ideas that it can bring to Boston Scientific. Now the second insight we are really excited also is about offices and which is called EcoStructure Workplace, workplace Advisor. Now EcoStructure Workplace Advisor, Chris, allows you to have insight into how your space is utilized. We talked about all those efficiency opportunities with the connectivity, Workplace Advisor helps you understand how your office space is utilized. Not only that, it also gives a mobile app to employees so they can be far more productive and they can have an immersive, engaging experience with buildings. Mm -hmm. And when employees are more productive, there's a possibility of more bold ideas. And I would say, let me talk to you regarding a customer and show a video where they had a bold idea of creating world's most sustainable office building. Let's have a look. It is called the Edge because we're on the edge of technology. The building is the most sustainable office building in the world. Schneider is the single backbone to connect everything. But it's not just sustainable, but it's also extremely comfortable to be the best workplace for our people. Uh, Schneider Electric being a single integrator for us, it worked extremely well. Because it was so fast earlier on, during when John Pascal was presenting, we want to make sure you catch it, so we're running it again for you. So thank you for that. And, and of course, we are super proud of it. That's why we want to show it off. Uh, that's our job. So time flies when we're having so much fun. So gentlemen, um, we are almost at the end of our session. So Ravi, I'm going to start with you. What would you like our audience today to retain from EcoStructure Industrial Software Platform? Sure, three things. Openness, it's the power of many, how the platform enables greater value through an ecosystem. The second one is scale. And when I say scale, I don't just mean big. It's about the ability of the platform to manage the smallest operations to the largest enterprise. So it's scale and scalability. But probably the most important thing 
is the ability of the platform to really drive business value and enable people by making technology easy to use. It's about simplicity. So open, scale, simplicity is what I'd like everyone to take away. Thank you, Ravi. Kevin, how about Ecostructure IT? So, I, you know, I think I'd characterize it as that what we're really trying to do is give our customers more visibility into what's going on right mm -hmm. now, give them insights into what's going to happen in the future, and provide enough openness so that they can solve uh, the big problems that maybe we can't do on our own. Yeah. And Manish, Ecostructure Building. So I would say Ecostructure Building, first of all, is collaborative, smart building IoT platform that is open, secure, scalable, but the three things is delivered to our customer is what we talked about earlier, is efficiency, it's making people productive, and more importantly, sustainability. And ecostructure building is as easy as? ABC. ABC. There you go, you're still with me, I'm glad with that. So this wraps up our sentiment. Thank you very well, much, Chris. it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Chris. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, you've been an awesome audience. Thank you very much.